This video serves as part two of our OmniOut Soft Hub to ThingsBoard Dashboard series. If you haven't watched the part one video or are unfamiliar with either the Soft Hub or the ThingsBoard platforms, please see the video description for links to the relevant videos and documentation. In this video, we'll expand on the example presented in part one, adding a control switch widget to our dashboard. The switch will send a control message to the SoftHub, which will tell the SoftHub to either disable or re-enable the publishing of our sensor data. We'll start by opening our previous ruleengine.xml file and updating the published data action object to listen for incoming messages from our ThingsBoard dashboard. We'll add in the topic we need to subscribe to per the ThingsBoard documentation. We save that and now we'll add the action objects to disable and enable packet publishing. First we'll add an action object that when executed disables processing for our on new packet event. Similarly, we'll add an action object to re-enable the same event as well. Now we'll create two user-defined event objects. These are the events that the SoftHub will queue as a result of receiving specific messages from the dashboard via the topic we've subscribed to. Now for each event, we'll create a single rule. The rule for the disable reporting message will execute the action object to disable on new packet event processing and the rule for the enable reporting message will execute the action object to enable on new packet event processing. And that's all the changes we need to make to the ruleengine.xml file. We'll save the file and then push it to our SoftHub device using the PSCP command. Since the ThingsBoard switch control widget allows us to change the message it sends when the switch is flipped, we'll take advantage of that to plug our user event names into the switch directly. As you can see, we've configured the switch to send strings containing the user event names we've defined in our rule file, so that these events will be queued when the corresponding message is received. Again, we're not going into the specifics of how the message mapping works here, as that information is covered in detail in our MQTT introductory video series, as well as in the SoftHub documentation linked in the video description. With that, we've made all the changes we need to make to add our new functionality, so now we'll restart the SoftHub daemon. Looking at our dashboard, once the SoftHub connects, we start seeing our temperature and humidity widgets updating. We'll slide our switch to the off position, sending our control message to the SoftHub, and per the rules we added into the SoftHub's rule file, the SoftHub stops publishing our sensor packet data and our widgets stop updating. We slide the switch again and the user-defined event to re-enable publishing is queued and we immediately see our sensor data again being published. Keep in mind that for brevity's sake, we've kept this example as simple as possible but it should be apparent that by using control widgets, you can easily create much more complex logic to be executed on the soft hub to perform many more actions. In addition to any of the dozens of built-in action objects supported by the soft hub, you can also queue Linux system commands and or your own scripts to be run externally. This opens a wide range of additional possibilities for controlling your soft hub devices remotely via your ThingsBoard dashboards.